Um, uh, yeah, I, that's, fair. that's fair. I uh, I decided to play, stay home and play for the Canucks. Um, it was kind of lucky just because I was so focused on playing in the in the Western League with Swift Current at that time, and um, I signed with the Canucks as kind of a backup plan just because I thought that I would confident guy. I thought that I'd be able to play in, in Swift Current and, and make that team after my midget play year, and then um, things didn't work out. So I, when I came back, it was – or even before that, I, I signed with the, with the old coach, and he got fired. And um, the main reason I signed with them was just because – uh, they were losing their starting goalie and they didn't really have a backup goalie at the time. So um, I thought it'd be a really good opportunity for me if I did have to come back that I could try to start with a, with, any, with a, just a junior A hockey team. And then um, coming back, again, that same opportunity was there. Uh, we had two rookie goalies, Kreitz and I, on the Canucks. And um, it was just a really, really good learning curve. I, I've always been on a pretty good hockey team. And then going into that year, I don't think our team was – uh, as good as we, as good as the, any other team in the league, I think we were pretty uh, bottom of the barrel at the start of the year. But um, we had really good coaches and and kind of made some good trades. And and our GM was really good that uh, we kind of brought in the right people and get, and got rid of the the wrong people. And um, again, for me, I was just I had the opportunity to play and play every game and and kind of learn how to win games when you can't score four goals or five goals and kind of trying to make that extra save. So being able to play at home uh, for both years of junior was, was awesome. I got to, my mom got to cook me meals and do my laundry and make my bed for me. Uh, be a mama's boy. Yeah. But um, it was great. I, I loved it. I had, I had really good teammates. And then um, I started talking to schools at the end of my first year. And then going into my second year, I knew I wanted it to be my last year. I think I thought I was ready for, for college. And um, unfortunately, no, I, I don't want to say unfortunately, but we got a new coach. And James Poole was, was an awesome coach for me too. And, and Jason Hannon and, and Reds were, were all really good coaches. And um, we had a really, really good team that year. Our, our GM kind of brought in some, some more really good players. And um, some guys really stepped up who were – probably wouldn't have had the same opportunity at any other team. So um, my second year of junior, we we were really, really good. And, um, again, I got to play every game. And that's nothing against Kreitz. I think Kreitz was, was a way better goalie than I was. I just think that um, some people learn differently and some people are focused in some ways that some aren't. And um, we were able to push each other every day. And I, I really am happy with what the relationship me and Kreitz had to – the two years of hockey there, but um, it's unfortunate as a goalie, only one goalie can play at a time. So it was lucky enough to be me. And then got to, I wanted to commit before Christmas. So I got to commit um, or I flew down to RIT start of November. And um, <clears throat> at that point, I just kind of fell in love with, with the rink and with, with the fans there. And um, I wasn't really educated on what schools were good and what schools were bad and what conferences were good and bad. So um, I just thought I knew I know that the Atlantic Conference isn't as, as good as the others. But um, at that time, I, I committed to RIT just because I thought every other team in the conference is going to have a rink like ours and fan sport like ours and um, kind of the winning culture that they do there. But um, after committing there, I got to play on that World Junior A team back up there and we unfortunately finished like fifth in the tournament and I got to play against Swiss, which is, which was fun. But, um, after that, we finished third in the league and with the Canucks and, um, got swept by Okotoks again in playoffs, but kind of an abrupt end, but it was fun. It was the only playoff when I care about was against the, the Bisons and the amateur play. Here we go. Who lit you up in practice more, me or Hannah? Hannah was like a more high glove guy and you were a low blocker guy. So probably you. Yep. Good. He's a way better player than me, but I'll let him know that. But you broke, you broke way too many teammates ribs. No, that was your fault, man. <laughs> because you wanted me to save a puck that was missing the net. No, I was making sure you knew where the net was. And you broke one of our best players ribs. That <laughs> bruised. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it was the best thing for him. Cause that guy would block everything after that before he wouldn't. 
So then he accidentally blocked a shot in practice and then uh, changed his whole career. Keep doing it like that. First round anyways. Did we lose in the first round that year? Mm-hmm. To Lethbridge? Mm-hmm. I remember, I remember the one goal I let in, which was bad. Probably. <laughs> I think it was a good series. I don't really remember. I know Scotty was gone winning with Team Alberta. Yeah. So we had, it was all up to you, and that uh, was the end of that. <laughs> Thanks. That team didn't score, though. I remember. We had a hard time scoring. But, uh, anyway, uh, so deciding to go to RIT, were there any other schools that were in play, or was it just you went there, checked it out, and that was the place to go? Um, there's definitely some other schools in play, uh, but like I said before, I really wanted to play. The, that was my last year of junior. I wanted to commit to the next year and, and go to school kind of reasonably early. Mm-hmm. Um, so that ruled out a lot of schools just because they were looking for two years down the road or three years down the road. And um, I felt like I was ready now. Mm-hmm. And then RIT was the first team I flew down to. And then I had a couple weekends in a row where I was flying down to different schools. But um, after flying on the RIT, they, um, I just fell in love with it, like I said. And they, they gave me a week to decide if I wanted to go there or not. And mm-hmm. I, I'm pretty sure every other school only gives you a week to kind of put the pressure on but um I, I thought it was a great fit I knew their start again it was all about opportunity for me their starter was leaving and um the other goalies at the time had hadn't played I'd played like two games combined so I felt like I had a chance to come in and start and great academic school I wasn't allowed to go to um some of the party or bigger party schools because my uh your family life. I don't think I would have excelled there like, who, wouldn't, who wouldn't let you go to those schools uh my dad my <laughs> dad was pretty pretty hard he, he didn't want me doing any of that stuff so which is fair good for him and then luckily at rit I'm, I'm getting a really good degree and i've been able to start every year so um it's kind of worked out for me there and staying out of the partying side of campus always i'm always at the engineers no <laughs> I bet you don't even know where the engineer section is. <laughs> no, we, we pick our battles at RIT. I've, that's one thing I've kind of learned is as long as you can pick your battles and have fun, and you might as well. But first first year was hard to – I need to learn how to play hangover sometimes. Play guilty. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's part of the experience. Um, you'd mentioned that you played for Team Canada. Um, just, I guess, to talk about that whole experience – um, getting the opportunity to play for Team Canada, um, what that was like, and just that whole tournament that you were a part of. Um, it was super cool. Obviously, it was some, a goal of mine coming into my second year of of junior. Um, I thought that I, I was going to be able to try out for that team, so it was something that I was gearing up for for a while. And then um, the starter that year, was he's an unbelievable goalie, and it was really cool to see how he – handles himself on and off the ice. And then... Who was the starter? Goleida on Cornell. Yeah. And then uh, we had, like, Ian Mitchell and Kale McCarr as our, as our top 2D. And um, I've known Kale for a while, but it was cool to just kind of see how these guys play and, and act on and off the ice again and, and how serious they are. So, um, unfortunately, we lost in the quarters to check. And then... We, we, got, we got scored on with five seconds left to tie it up, and then they won an OT. Oh, no. And then um, I got to play against the Swiss, which was really cool. We won 5-2, but I think I had, like, whatever, 18 shots. <laughs> uh, but still, just being able to be a part of a Team Canada team is, is something I don't know if I'll be able to ever do again. Hopefully mm-hmm. I will, but at that time, it's, it's a pretty surreal experience and, and kind of seeing your family come down and, and watch me play on the bench. and. Um, it was really cool. I, I can't, uh, yeah, it was, it was really cool. It was pretty short. And, um, at, at the end of the tournament, I was excited to go back and play, play for the Canucks again, just because, um, I was gone for like around a month. I think I, all of December I was yeah, maybe 20 days. I don't know. It was, it was a long, somewhat of a long tournament, but again, I, the best, my best 
memory from that tournament was when we played U.S. in an exhibition game in Cold Lake or whatever. And uh, we were doing warm up, and there there was fans like already sold out rank. There was fans already kind of looking for autographs and and around the rink when we were doing our off ice warm up, and uh, we ended up winning that game in overtime uh, against U.S., which was something that I'll probably never forget. It was sold out rink. It was I thought the rink was better than the rink that the tournament was held in, just because it was it was bigger and nicer and brighter and louder, but. I think that's probably my best uh, memory from that tournament. Right on. How many autographs did you give out? Way too many. They didn't even know who I was, but I was just signing and everything. <laughs> um, okay, playing at RIT, I guess just kind of talk about you're in what year are you in now? I'm going into my senior year. Uh, so I guess just talk about how your experience as a student um, and a player there, goalie, has evolved from your freshman year um to now uh i think i think it's away from hockey i think i've evolved the, the most i think that um living at home was kind of not the best thing for me at in the end just in junior just because stepping into rit and stepping into freshman year living on my own uh, with three of the roommates when you have to cook and clean and, and kind of monitor your sleep and do all that stuff that you don't really think about uh when you're younger uh by yourself um, I think that's where I really struggled. I didn't, I think my nutrition was, was brutal and I think my sleep habits were brutal. And, um, I thought I came in pretty, pretty hot and, and was able to start right away. And then, uh, where things got into trouble is when I started losing kind of a routine and, and eating poorly and playing Xbox till whatever, 3 a.m. And it was just, um, I needed to grow up a lot. And, and fortunately for me, I had really, really good roommates and they helped me out. Um, my one roommate cooked every single meal for me the first half of the year. I didn't touch a, touch a dish. Um, but at that point he was just like, dude, you're going to have to learn at some point. So, um, fortunate for me, I, I had good roommates who kind of kept me in line. And, and then my, uh, second year, I, I kind of started to realize that there's a lot of more stuff just away from the rink that, that can help you play well. And, um, I really focused on having a big summer in the gym. I think I kind of came in and, as a boy my freshman year, and then look at me now. I'm an absolute man, mutant. So <laughs> I think um, from freshman year to sophomore year, um, I really took it seriously. And um, my sophomore year and junior year, I had the same roommates, but they were all uh, older than me. They're all like 95s. Um, and for me, I think that was the best – best thing for me I was nothing against my freshman year roommates but I think we were we had a lot fun, we had a lot of fun and we were kind of childish at times and then uh, the roommates I had sophomore year and and junior year have been they were like kind of my dads and we'd obviously have fun and stuff and and joke around but um, they'd be making these like meal preps and casseroles and these extravagant meals while I was eating chicken fingers and fries my my freshman year so um again I, it was a really big learning curve and and I got to really take it seriously going into my sophomore year because I was so confident with how I was in the gym and then I thought I had a really good see our off season of, of on ice stuff and um I felt like everything was kind of coming into place at that point so then sophomore year was a really good year for me um on the ice and off the ice and then except sophomore year spring was tough on t- tough on the academics I didn't do as well as I should have but whatever and then um junior year same thing I kind of had that same confidence going in I didn't really feel like I needed to put on a lot more mass in the summer I felt like I was at the at the stage where I just wanted to keep uh keep the same strength throughout the summer and and if there's some things just tweak things and and make sure my body's healthy going into my junior year and then again junior year I felt like I was confident going in and um I've been lucky enough to play every year and and kind of start and then junior year our, our our team was really good and um we could score a lot and our we had our, our top four d were all uh seniors so they were they were big and mean and and could hit and could block shots like no other so um junior year was great we had a really good team and it's unfortunate we had to end early because i think we could have done something special but um 
I've loved my experience in RIT. It's been, I think I've learned a lot more than I ever thought I would. And it's been the best time I've ever had in my life too, just because the guys have been great. And uh, we do get to have a good time away from the rink and our fan support is, is unbelievable. We are, we're the only Div 1 team on, on campus. So uh, you kind of get treated like celebrities uh, around around campus, which is something that I, I enjoy. Yeah, of course. So when you walk, <laughs> you walk, you have all the engineers cheering for you. Just recognizing you, yeah. <laughs> Are you the guy now that uh, they put young guys with, so you can teach them? Um, I'd like to think of myself as kind of more of a leader now. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't say that they put me with young guys, but I, I like to think I've, I've kind of gone through yeah. a different route than some people. So. It's good. Right. To... Just going through that experience, like being able to recognize that you maybe weren't doing things the right way and having to turn it around is a big part of that. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I definitely was not doing things the right way my freshman year, but. Um, what's the best part of, uh, of playing college hockey for you there? Um, I think the fans. I think um, we have whatever a five year old rink. It's reasonably brand new and. Um, our student section is always full every game and hopefully it's, I don't know if it will be next year, but um, just the fan support we have and, and kind of seeing your classmates in the crowd cheering you on, screaming your name. I think that's something that I'll, I'll kind of remember forever just because you are so close with, with your classmates and um, all the group projects and all the late studies and stuff like that. Um, and then you get to see them cheering you on. It's kind of something that's, surreal and and then just the professor i think i'm lucky at rit that we have classes around like 25 to 20 and um, so if you miss class your professor you're getting an email from your professor knowing that you missed class and um we've been able to go out for dinners with our professors just the hockey team and it's just the support at rit has been something that i never thought i'd have and um it's something that i'm gonna probably remember forever that's cool um so what do you what's after uh, what's after your tar- time at RPI? Where are you going to go then? You say it again. I'm ending this. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know yet. I don't know. I think I've been able to talk to a couple teams, and um, like I don't. I think I'm going to have to have an absolute Mike Richter year. Like I said that last time that you messed up, but anyway. No, I didn't uh, think you knew who Mike Richter was. I didn't realize it was like the goalie of the year award. Yeah, just do your research, bud. Who's Mike? Who did Mike Richter play for? The Rangers. Okay, yeah, good. I'm, anyway, I'm allowed to keep talking. Or are you going to keep yeah, teasing yeah. me? Carry on. Um, I'm I'm hoping to be able to to sign a sign a deal on the A, and um, again, I'm going to have to have like a Mike Richter year to have to sign the show. But um, I still think I'm kind of looked at as undersized, and um, hopefully, there's a team that'll be able to take a chance on on me and uh, what I can do, whether that's the A or the coast, I, I'm hoping to play in the A. I'm hoping to be able to s- sign an A deal and, and start there. And then um, I don't know uh, how long I'll, I'll want to stay in, in North America if, if I don't see things going for me. Um, I'd, I'd really like to go over to Europe and, and try to make a career in Europe and maybe get my master's there and, and kind of start my life out that way but again I, I love hockey and hockey my passion but I don't I know I don't want to kind of grind out and and play in the coast for my whole life but it's I know there's going to be a time when I have to hang them up but hopefully it's not anytime soon and I got a smoking hot girlfriend to look after too they've been dating for <laughs> like three years <laughs> do you have an agent that's working with you or are you kind of dealing with that stuff on your own uh, I have an advisor working with me. Yeah, I'm not allowed to have an agent. You should know that. Yeah, yeah, agent advisor. Sorry. Um, <laughs> what do you do? What What do you do in the off season? What have you been doing now? Um, unfortunately, I I had an internship with an insurance company downtown, um, but it got canceled because of the whole virus. So now I'm just living the dream. I. Uh, I get to work out at, I'm working out at whatever, 11 o'clock at Tizzy with Adam Tisdale every day. 
and then spending time with my smoking hot girlfriend, like I said, um, going, <laughs> going to my cabin, going, going golfing a lot. Um, again, I've just been kind of focusing on, I've been doing lots of yoga, which is nice. And Not a boy. I've been, it's nice. I, like, I, I definitely have a good routine going. It's not like I'm bored and in bed all day. I, I do stuff every day and, yeah. and make sure that I'm, I'm active every day. And whether it's like bike rides or walks with my mom, spending time with my mom. And, um, it's great. I've like, obviously I, I wish I was working and wish I was kind of getting that experience in the real world. But, um, going into my senior year, it's something that I'm able to, fo- I'm able to focus on, mm-hmm. uh, just straight hockey and, and focus on making my body as healthy as it can and as strong and flexible as it can to go in my last year. Good for you. Um, how does the game change for you as a goalie from playing uh, junior A where you had a couple really good years um, and then now playing NCAA? Um, like I think the biggest thing is that there's three good players on each junior team and who you have, kind of have to worry about every game. And um, those three players are now in college. So every college hockey team has not only th- uh, 12 good forwards, but three forwards that you would never see in junior. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think that learning that you constantly have to be reading plays and reading stick blades and, and kind of being aware of everybody on the ice rather than just two or three guys every, whatever, two shifts. So um, I think just learning the game that way and, and kind of always being aware and always trying to be ahead of the game rather than behind. I think in junior, you could kind of squeak away with being a bit late and, and making the save, but now um, everyone can score. Everyone can can pick a spot to score. Everyone can shoot harder than people could shoot in junior. So mm. um, just kind of really focusing on the little details that are going to help you um, on the ice and, and making that extra save a game. And juniors, you you wouldn't need to, but now it's it's all about that extra save, and especially since – we play only whatever 35 games a year rather than 60 games. Every game kind of feels like a playoff game just because it's so important for standings and um, you never want to get swept on a weekend and, and you're always looking to sweep on a weekend. So um, it's nice that you can gear up for games and gear up for throughout the week to play uh, on the weekend rather than, you know, it's like a Monday night game at Max Bell. <laughs> or it's 14 people there. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's it was a bit of a bit of an adjustment, but yeah. everyone's faster, stronger. The, the games don't slow down at all. I know in juniors, sometimes again on a Monday night, sometimes the games would slow down in the second period or third period because everyone's gassed, and it's whatever three and three or three and four. But like I said, since we only play on the weekends, it's it's pretty high paced, and and everyone we're working out every every week and every day that that conditioning aspect is is kind of not a factor anymore. Do you find, because you play the, like you, you'll you do a Friday-Saturday set or Saturday-Sunday or whatever it is, that uh, you do a lot more like preparation specific to who you're playing, like knowing the shooters that you have coming up? Yeah, yeah, and, and you kind of, there's a lot more preparation on power plays and PKs and four checks and everything like that. It's not just okay, this is their forecheck, this is their back check, or this, this is their power play 20 minutes before the game. It's, it's we'll dedicate a, a Thursday practice to, to mimic their PK and then mimic their power play so we, our PK can play against it. So um, Monday Monday morning they, we on our board, we have everything about the next team coming in and, and the guys are reading it every day and, and kind of studying it. So there's a lot more preparation than there was ever in junior yeah. Um, is there anything that you find that's helped you just kind of be successful throughout your career? I know you mentioned it earlier, kind of being a smaller goalie. Um, but it seems like wherever you go, like Midget, you were great. Uh, well, Bantam, you were good. Midget, Junior A, you had a couple of really good years. And then now you're starting to have a lot of success at that level. Um, so is there anything in particular like that you can kind of pinpoint that has just helped you get better as you as you uh, go through each level? I'm a bit hurt that you said Bantam I was good. 
I, I correct me if I'm wrong, but we beat the best team in the South. Did you not hear the question? Just reassuring that you remember that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I said you were good in Bantam. Thank you. Luke, though, you beat our team in Bantam when you had no business beating us because you had you and then Parker Coin, who never missed. Um, but then you guys lost the next round. No, we won the next round. By about a goal differential of 36. <laughs> so, so you got to play hockey for another two weeks while I got to go on vacation. I'd rather be playing hockey than going on vacation. Yeah, so anyway. Right. Answer the question. Um, I don't know. I always think that. Trying to compliment know. you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, again, since I've always kind of been a smaller goalie, I've always kind of had a chip on my shoulder that I, I can I can do what a 6'4 goalie can do. I can do just as much, if not more. So um, I've always kind of believed in myself that whether I'm whatever, 5'8 or 6 feet or 6'4, I'm going to be able to do the same things. Um, and then just having fun. I always I love coming to the rink. I love seeing my teammates. I love spending time with them and, and kind of getting better with them. I love chirping on the ice and practice and kind of getting guys to try to score as much as they can and, and me trying to stop as much as I can. So um, I've never really tried. I know sometimes in juniors I take take a couple practices off, but Jason Hanna and, and James Poole will tell you that firsthand. But um, I've always tried to bring a fun aspect to each practice in each game that, um, yeah, I'm having fun, but I'm also getting better and, and working as hard as I can. So, um, and I like to prove people wrong. I like, I like when people doubt me and then I can kind of shove it down their throats that they're wrong. Um, was that, uh, I guess, well, going back to being <clears throat> for goalies, like how tall are you? Six feet. And that's a small goalie. Uh, it's known as a small goalie. Yeah. There's probably only. I think three, UC Saros is 5'11", Bernier's 5'11", Halak's like six feet. But other than that, everyone's either 6'1", 6'2", 6'3", 6'4". Was that something like that you heard all the time, like even in Bantam? So, you know, like you weren't drafted, we went to Swift camp. Um, was that something that would come up back then too? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I really, uh, I was told I was going to get drafted in Bantam, but then... Um, after not getting drafted and every team kind of inviting, inviting me to camp, I was always told that they couldn't draft me because I was too small and they didn't know how, how much I was going to grow. And then um, even kind of looking at junior teams, when I, after our mid trip way year, um, some teams wouldn't take a chance or wouldn't want me because I was whatever, 5'10 at the time. Mm -hmm. um, so that's always kind of been there. It's always been something that, I'm aware of obviously it's not it's not there's nothing I can do about it I don't really have to worry about it because it's out totally of my control but um, I think the game is coming kind of back and it's it's if you can stop the puck and can do the same things that a six four goalie can do um, they're gonna take a chance on you but I think if I have the same stats as a six four goalie stat yeah they're gonna take him which is fair I I why wouldn't they but that just kind of gives me an extra edge or chip on my shoulder that I want to be better and do better than, than anyone who's bigger than me and, and give props to the guys who are smaller than me and, and still playing the same level that I'm at. Oh, that's good. Um, okay. A couple, a uh, couple fun little questions to end here. You were the worst driver on our midget AAA team. We practiced after you when you played junior A for the Canucks, you were still the worst driver on that team. You were the worst driver on RIT campus. I actually uh, crashed my goalie partner's car, so I, don't, I didn't have a car. <laughs> I didn't have a, I didn't have a car. I don't have a car down there, but I was going to a movie, and I ended up hitting somebody in a parking lot and doing some damage. So, how, many, yeah. how many parking lot bangers have you been into? The worst one was I was trying to uh, a lot. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Yeah, a lot. Wenzel, the Wenzel actually hit me in, in a parking lot once in mid trip play. He backed into me. But um, the worst one was, was bad. It was in the summertime. 
and I was trying to, I just was trying to drive with a roller skate on. And it was a standard car. Oh my God. So it was just. And you said you're at an engineering school? Yeah. Really? But I'm in the business program, so. Was that like a group project, driving with your roller skates on? No, this was, this was back in, in the midget junior oh. days. Oh. <laughs> and it didn't work for you? No. No, what, I. Uh, what did your mom say about that one? Not happy. No, I'm kind of on my I'm kind of on my own with, with with cars now. Both my parents were supportive until I uh, too many tickets and a couple of crashes. So that's fine. I can't trip you too bad. I was the exact same way. I think I had if I was by the time I was twenty, I was probably on my fourth vehicle. Yep, yep. It's it's an expensive. You're on your own. Yeah, it's an expensive habit. Yeah. It's not a good one. That's good that you don't have a vehicle down there. That probably uh, saves your parents and your coaches probably a lot of stress. I'm a good driver. I just get excited sometimes. <laughs> What's the best McKnight team you played for? That was a fan question on Instagram from one of your McKnight followers. Um, probably my the Pee Wee two team first year, our first year Pee Wee. Uh, we won everything. We won like minor or. SO minor hockey week playoffs. Every tournament we were in, it was fun. And we had a really good group of guys. And I think my dad was coaching that year, which was fun. Who was on that team? You wouldn't know anybody. Oh, okay. So it was well, you. you. <clears throat> um, no, we had, we had some really good players. It's just none of them kind of pursued hockey after that. Who's the best goalie that you played with? Uh, Scotty, Ian Scott, for sure. And not, nothing against the other goalies. I loved every, I loved every partner I've had, but uh, Scotty is kind of – Scotty and I were different in a lot of ways, but similar in a lot of ways. And um, we both had that kind of competitive edge on the ice that we wanted to be better than the other one, and, and we always wanted to push each other in that way. So um, it was really cool to play with him. I, I unfortunately, in Bantam, he – Fortunate for me, but unfortunately in Bantam, he uh, hurt his knees and had to get surgery on him. So that kind of opened the door for me to play. Um, but even that year, he was su super supportive as such a young goalie. And then uh, midget trip play, we, we kind of got to split time. And um, in practice, we would go at each other and, and try to beat each other in every competition drill that we could. And then off the ice, we'd, we'd have a blast together. So mm -hmm. um that relationship with him is something that I'll, I kind of look back at it that I'm super happy that I had that just because I got to learn from, I think one of the goalies probably going to play in the NHL someday. And um, just to see that I, I could compete with him and that we could have fun while competing. And I think that's what every kind of goalie tandem should be is that you hopefully have two good goalies that are kind of going at each other's throats every, every practice and every, when when I'm playing, he's my biggest supporter. When he's playing, I'm I'm his biggest supporter, and you never kind of have that jealousy aspect there. It was just something that we wanted the best for each other, and we wanted the best for the team. So whoever was playing was was going to get the the most support that they could give. Do you think that like having him as your goalie partner in your last year of minor hockey um, in midget, do you think that, that helped you going into junior? Yeah, yeah, and I, I think that if Again, I don't think I was – I think Scotty was the guy. Um, so going into that, I kind of always wanted to push myself even more to try to be the guy and and be better than, than he was. And um, I kind of learned, learned from that year that uh, practice is, is kind, of, kind of important. And uh, if you want to get better and if you want to kind of keep moving forward, you're going to have to practice just as hard as you play. And mm – -hmm. It's something that coaches are going to say. It's kind of redundant now that you hear that your whole life. But what a word. Holy. I'm that was school good. Guy. You were at an engineer school. School guy. Well done. Well, that, that, was, that was the best, obviously the best goaltending pair I think I've ever had on a team. And if you look at all the teams in Calgary in the last 10 years, there's probably not a goaltending tandem that was as good as that one or not many anyways. Was, we're pretty lucky to have both of you guys there. 
Made me yeah. a better shooter, lighting you guys up in practice. You would go a little blocker every time. I couldn't score on Scotty. I remember for the longest, I could not score on that guy. He would drive me nuts. I wouldn't shoot on him. I would just go down to your end and shoot on you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> then I figured it out. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> um, favorite goalie growing up? Cristobal Huey. Um, Montreal Canadiens, number 39, French guy. He, uh, my first ever, I was midnight, orange, black, and white colors, and I, my first ever set of pads were red, white, and blue, exactly like Cristobal Huey's. Cause were I wanted they No, they were RBKs. Wasn't his coho? No. Yeah, they were. No, they weren't. I'm going to look it up right now. Look it up. It's like the it, it's like little C's. Shit. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Where is he was, now? He just retired. He was playing in the France league. Yeah, you're right. Swiss league. He was playing in the Swiss league. Good for him. Yeah, Swiss A league. Yeah. Yeah. He was he was like 41 and still playing. That's pretty good. Yeah. So he was my favorite goalie growing up, and then now, um, Carey Price, who I always look at because of his. Tech, technical ability, but for me, my favorite goalie now is, is UC Saros, and he's the backup for for the Preds. No, I, I think uh, I think they're he's they're looking at him to be the next guy, and yep. I don't know how long Rene is going to last, but um, yeah, he gets old. yeah, and and Saros is is only five eleven, so thank you for coming. How big is Cristobal Huey? Six three, six four. I don't know. Six feet. Oh, he's not. Yeah, he is. Seriously? Yeah, six feet. Cool. There you go. How do you not know that? Because I don't look at height. Because height's been there my whole life. So. Good, good answer. I like that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, buddy. I'll, uh, I know you got. Uh, you said workout at eleven. So. I'll yeah, because he's probably here right now. So. Okay. Thanks for doing this for the third time. Your fault all three times. You were, yeah, but you were way better this time than the previous two. I think I was the same. Is Tizzy still playing? Yeah, he just transferred from Clarkson to Sacred Heart. Oh, well, get him on here one day. Play the guitar. He is a money. He came up to my cabin, and the girls there were impressed with his guitar playing. Yeah, oh, I heard him playing cigar back. It was pretty good. Fish in a barrel, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buddy. See ya.